Thanks for listening and subscribing to episode 229 of the Clive Barker podcast, the only podcast dedicated to the imagination of Clive Barker. In this episode, we discuss news from the reef, including Simon Bamford's crowdfunded short film, a huge art sale with original sketches and paintings, and Clive is appearing at a convention with Tony Todd and the Hellraiser cast. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Up to 50% of the proceeds will support the program where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. There's a new news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.cliveparkercast.com to find links to videos and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Hey, uh, welcome. This is uh, the Clive Barker Podcast, episode 229. And uh, this is a news episode, so we're getting getting caught up on the news and finishing up the duels of blood. Yeah, so it's been a, an interesting week so far. Um Lots of stuff has come out about Clyde Barker, and there's been some uh, interesting, uh, interesting uh, art auctions, and um, we'll get into that. But uh, first of all, I'd like to open this episode by wishing Simon Banford a happy birthday. He uh, he had a happy birthday on um, May 23rd. Yeah, yeah. So just uh, just a couple of days ago, as we're recording this, um, so happy birthday, Simon. Yeah, he posted a picture of himself on his birthday in a hot tub with his sister and some ducks, um, <laughs> rubber duckies. And uh, I couldn't help but uh, remember when he was on our podcast and he was telling us about uh, in in the Cricklewood Studios, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Pinewood Studios. The duck sound. Yeah, that there was a duck pond outside of the studio where they were doing Hellraiser and sometimes they would hear the ducks quack. <laughs> yeah. And then the next – the next day, there were the, the ducks were all gone, and they had duck pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> that was quacks funny. will be legendary even yeah. in hell. So, happy birthday, Simon! Yeah. Uh, I hope you have a great uh, birthday. And in a good segue to Simon Banford's birthday, he's working on a new project. Yeah, yeah, and we just found out about this like minutes ago, or you you just discovered this minutes ago. So we're still kind of learning about this as we're uh, recording right now. So yeah, but it's a uh, it's called the Invisible Collection, and uh, it's a short film being funded on Indiegogo right now. Um, it features a Game of Thrones actor Ian Gelder and Mark Wingett. Uh, so Mark Wingett was in uh, uh, Finders Keepers, of course. Uh, he played uh, – what was the name of the mobster? I forgot. Frank, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And, That's uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's going to be directed by Johnny Dixon, produced by Zoe Krausen, and co-produced by Simon Banford. So the overview of the project says here that uh, Os- uh, The Invisible Collection is a short film about an art collector, Berkovic, and dealer Oscar Swindon. This film features an unexpected twist, which will keep the audience hooked. Psychotastic Productions are currently doing the festival <coughs> circuit with short film assisted, featuring Stephen Arnold and Steve Hoosen. With every pound pledged towards the Invisible Collection, 25p will go to registered charity, the Phoebe Research Fund, who carries out research into epi- epidermal... Okay, I'm going to have to take a deep breath because it's like Saturday morning and I slept three hours. But yeah. epidermolysis bullosa, which is probably a skin condition. Um, so that's great that he's working on this. Um, yeah. Yep. So let's see if we can make this um, happen. Uh, right now they're on Indiegogo and they got two backers. A, uh, they already have 178 U.S. dollars out of uh, 3,814 flexible goal. So um, whatever you pledge to this movie on a flexible goal, they'll be able to keep after the campaign is over, even if it doesn't make the $3,814. So if you want to contribute to that, just uh, we'll leave a link on the show notes, and you can help Simon Banford co-produce The Invisible Collection. And you can get a signed poster, digital copy, um you can promote your business, I guess. I don't know if that means you'd get in their credits or how that works, but uh, so they've got some options for for different backer rewards too. Absolutely. So um, 
interesting. Let's see. Uh, let's see yeah. what happens, and uh, go ahead and, and support it because you know it's a great it's a great project by Simon Benford and has Mark Winget and Ian Gelder. So yeah. uh, so hopefully go, it gets made. Go Simon Banford. And, yeah, and and we'll 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 get to even more uh, Simon Bamford news in a little bit. But f- first, we've got um, uh, R- Russell Charrington. So you remember HorrorCon UK? He had an art exhibition and sale at HorrorCon UK of his Clive Barker art collection. But uh, there's still a ton more. In fact, he we we he's got a, a full PDF catalog that he'll give to people who are interested in in uh, buying some of his art. But there's yep. amazing stuff in there. Stuff that uh, there's original ink blots from Cabal in there, and uh, we've got mm-hmm. a, a link in the show notes where um, you can kind of, if you go to the the blog post I made, you can click on the main image and go through a, a little slideshow of of uh, just a, a, some of the pictures that are available, some of the paintings and sketches. Right. Some stuff is from the '80s. Some stuff is from the '70s, and you got. Uh, Sketches for theater posters from the Daw Company. You know, you got stuff from when they did the theater play The Sack. Um, you have paintings, well-known paintings like Icon, which made it to the cover of Incarnations, I believe. Yeah. Um, you have some amazing stuff. Aberat sketches, studies, Aberat paintings. Um, it's amazing. I mean, it's it's a, a, a huge collection that Russell apparently has amassed over the years while working with Clive and, and being friends with Clive. And now you, too, can own an original by Clive Barker. And these yeah. prices are pretty accessible, I would say. Yeah. Can you imagine owning one of the inkblot sketches from Cabal or an original Aberat painting? Yeah. Yeah. Or, a, a, you know, one of those amazing pen and ink drawings that Clive did in the seventies. Yeah. Some of these are really, really amazing. Um, you got, uh, yeah, you got like a, a, a sketch of mischief, John mischief. You got, uh, you know, one of them is called the boy who was barely there, I think, which is this, uh, this boy who's putting his hands on his face, but his face is not really there, but you can only see the outline of his, his eyes and nose and mouth. But it, amazing stuff. I mean, there's yeah. an element that appeared in Aberat, which is a little red boat under the cloudy night sky. Um, stuff that's really like out of this world. Um, and especially, that, like you said, the ink blots from Aberat. And there's that painting. Uh, there's that painting from Aberat of the guy who's got that that sort of fish bowl around his head, and he's got a little snorkel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, probably one of the early paintings that Clive was working on Aberat. So yeah. um, I, I myself recently when he was at Horicon and he was announcing some of those uh, sketches for sale, I did get a couple from Russell. So I did get a study from uh, one of the little painted elements in Aberat. Um, yeah, and that's I, awesome. Yeah, and I got another one from uh, – Looks like it's from the seventies. It's like two lovers laying together, so that was great. I'm looking forward to uh, framing those and putting those in my office because they're pretty amazing. They're the first time I've actually had some sketches by Clive Barker, so I'm really happy. And you can be happy too. Have Have yours arrived in the mail yet? Oh yeah, yeah. I have oh, them okay. here. Yeah, I'm looking oh, at them great. right now. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, and then uh, last but uh, definitely not least, Clive Barker is going to appear at Monster Mania, uh, with, yeah. along with Tony Todd, and then also Hellraiser cast. I think Ashley Lawrence, uh, Doug Bradley, Simon Bamford, a, um, Nicholas Vince, and Barbie Wilde. Oh, that's fantastic! Because in other uh, conventions, you know, that we've had the Hellraiser cast, sometimes Ashley Lawrence wouldn't be there, mm-hmm. and and if she's going to be there, then that's amazing because you can get like a full set of signatures. Yeah, yeah, it's that's awesome, and I I remember the first when I went to Monster Mania, it was like there's a Hellraiser reunion, and it was such a huge deal, but mm-hmm. now it's like you know most conventions you can get. Different combinations of Hellraiser reunion a yeah, lot of the yeah. time. So Absolutely. It's become a kind of a regular part of their lives, which is awesome. It's a great time to be a Hellraiser fan. It's a great time to be a Candyman fan, too, because yeah. uh, Tony Todd is going to do the special Candyman in costume photo op at the convention. So he's going to be actually dressed up like Candyman. 
Yeah, and not only that, but you can also get a photo with Clive Barker and Tony Todd together. <laughs> wow, that's that's something, huh? That yeah. is something. I don't think I've ever heard of that happening before. Right, right. I mean, I know that you could take sometimes a picture with the the cast of Hellraiser and Clive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be amazing. And uh, so that's – go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, it's going to be amazing. And Robert Englund's also going to be there and Kane Hodder. So uh, they'll also have uh, photo ops, but uh, Robert Englund's not going to be in costume. And that's August 16th through 18th uh, at Monster Mania in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And there will yeah. be a link in the show notes where you can – you know, you can uh, – Join it, you know. It's even though it's all the way out in August, there the convention hotel's already sold out. Oh wow! Yeah, can you imagine how many people are going to be at this thing? Yeah. Well, you can still try to find something on Airbnb or yeah, any other lower motels in the vicinity. If you yeah. just want to, just make sure that you look under the bed to see if there's any dead roaches in there. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out great for us, though. I really liked being able to do the Airbnb thing. Yeah, yeah, it was great because we weren't that far away from the 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 convention hotel. Yeah, the the Hyatt, and um, and then it, it was a, it was excuse, a lovely house, and it gave us an excuse to have a car so we could drive around and see the other things. Yeah, and we could do a party with the people mm -hmm. from uh, Little Spark Films, and it's today as we say this, I think it was almost to the day that it's been a year since we've been to the Dallas. Convention and did the interview with the Cenobites along with Little Spark Films, so that that's a good a good thing to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. So if you uh, if you do end up going to Monster Mania, and I went to that the one in 2012 to you know to for the Hellraiser reunion and to you know for my second screening of the Cabal cut. Uh, mm -hmm. And so if you go to that, share your pictures and your your stories and stuff, and you know tell us what how it went. Yep, yep. And did we uh, did we speak before about the auction, Clyde Barker Art auction that happened with the Clyde Barker Archive? Because I was yeah. just looking at the results today. Oh yeah, we haven't talked about the results at all. That'd be a good uh, that'd be a good one to to discuss. And so uh, it seems like there were quite a few that were sold, and uh, some of them were pretty amazing, like. Uh, you know, matter modely, mostly things connected to Aberrat are always so striking uh, in terms of the uh, the vibrancy of the art and the colors and the, the, the style of painting. So you can see here that uh, a lot of them didn't get sold because a reserve was not met, especially like the, some of the drawings that uh, that Clive had for sale. But in other, it, it, some of the most expensive ones actually did get sold. Uh, so matter modely's grand aunt ended up being. Um, one by the bid of uh, 2050, so 2050 dollars, and then you had the tapestry towers, that was not sold. Um, but there's a lot of these little ones here that also got like Jesus wept, which is supposed to be like Frank just before he gets like torn to pieces. That one got sold for 1650, which is pretty amazing. Um, which is mixed media on ring bound paper, and uh, you know you, you can go there and check it out. One of my favorite. Uh, paintings that was up for sale did not get sold. There was Tidal, which is this yeah. uh, blue. It's it 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 really is a different style for Clive to make something like this because I know that he's done a few canvases like this. It almost looks like poured paint art, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. Um, T i d a l, right? Like like uh, like tide. Like the tide, yeah. yeah. So that one was amazing, and that didn't get sold. It was uh, highest bid was eighteen hundred dollars, but unfortunately the reserve wasn't met. So um, yeah, that was amazing. So that ended on May eleven, and uh, I was just looking at the results now, and um, I hope they do this again. I hope they do this again and put some more pieces up, because it looks like um, it was a great chance for a lot of fans to get some uh, original artwork. Yeah, yeah, and I. And it was the first time that Phil and Sarah had done an auction like that, and it seems like it was a pretty good success. So looking forward to seeing more of those, and we'll keep sharing them as they come up. Absolutely. Um, so since this seems to be the episode of uh, Simon Bamford, uh, in, the, in the Duels of Blood, the final episode, I mean the final uh, round is over, uh, Rachel versus Onaka, and Onaka t came out the champion. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. 
uh, it's a great birthday gift for Simon mm -hmm. uh, that he won the uh, the final round vote of all of these like all of these Nightbreed characters. So uh, he ended up being the one that came out on top. Also, Duels of Blood Volume Four. Also, congratulations to Rachel, uh, played by Catherine Chevalier. That Rachel made it all the way through, you know, all the way to the final round is awesome. Yeah. Do you think we should send her a message and let her know? Yeah. Yeah. We might as well. <laughs> I think she would be pleasantly surprised that uh, out of all of those 64 Nightbreed characters, she made it to the final yeah. final uh, round. She's, she's so, a really uh, private person, so we haven't been tagging her in things or, you know, involving her in stuff that much. But, uh, you know, I think she had asked us not to. Not to give out her Facebook and stuff like that. Sure, she uh, she's a yoga teacher now. I think she yeah. uh, she's a wellness um, advocate and stuff like that. So, she I think she leads a pretty pretty nice calm life, and yeah. um, I think she would be pleasantly surprised that a movie she did twenty nine years ago would uh, would still be like getting fans all riled up and voting for her character. So that's yeah. nice. Yeah, so that's exciting. Uh, congratulations, Rachel, and especially congratulations to Simon Bamford's Onaka character, who is uh, has a big fan with Laurie Markle Bichet. I think she mm -hmm. had, a, had a big part in his winning. Uh, yeah. Con congratulations also to Laurie. Uh, she sent us a, a picture that's up on the well. As when this airs, it'll be up on the Duels of Blood. I think I sent it to you in Messenger. Sure. Sure, that's that would make a great featured image for our post. <laughs> yeah. All right. So so next up, um, we are we. I know we've been talking about doing Abrat Days of Magic Knights of War pretty soon, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, that we're going to be putting off for another month. So that'll be in July um, because we're we're you know get scheduling the the guests and stuff, and we want to make sure that we have the best episode possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we've been talking to people like Peggy O'Leary, and mm -hmm. I think we ended up sending a message to Sorka, Sorka Neline as yeah. well, who did Dark Imaginer. By the way, Sorka Neline's new book is out about vampires. So, yeah, uh, postmodern vampires. Yep. So I think I might try to snag myself a copy of that. And uh, <laughs> I love the cover. <laughs> yeah. The cover is George W. Bush, like, sucking the blood out of, like, the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> so kind of a c controversial cover there, yeah. but uh, excellent choice, if I yeah. might say. Of course, we're uh, in a time now when people wish that he would come back. You know, people, uh, <laughs> people think now think, well, maybe he wasn't so bad. <laughs> Oh, my God. Anyway, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so make sure that you keep updated on those things. <clears throat> and um, we'll be – we're already reading Abarat 2, so I hope you guys are reading it too. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be like a book club thing, but at least we can all, you know, be a little more – because this book is so rich and so multi-layered and has so many characters. I think it's important for you to at least refresh your memory before you listen to the episode just yeah. so you know what we're talking about. So, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's been probably like 10 years since I've read Aberat 2. Wow, so. yeah. <clears throat> probably the same for me, yeah. I read it when it came out. Yeah, and I think I've read it maybe – Two times because, or yeah, because I read, it, read, I read it, again. it again for, for when Abrat 3 came out. Right, right, right. <clears throat> well, yeah, <clears throat> so that one will be coming up in July, and then next week we'll be doing um, the commentary track for the last episode of the first season of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, which um, is the Christmas episode. It's called the, A Midwinter's Tale. Mm-hmm. So uh, that should be interesting. Um, and then, yeah, I wanted to ask you, and and maybe the maybe the listeners can can weigh in on this too. Uh, since we are moving Aberat to July, that gives us some options for what to do until then. I was thinking either you know we tackle the six issue um, Harrowers series. Uh, you know, with an Abrat, probably an Abrat break in the middle. Cause, well, I don't know that we, we could do that in three episodes, right? Cause you do two, two issues per episode. I think so. Yeah. That would be yeah. a good idea. Or we could start in on the A to Z of horror commentaries with a for American psycho, which I think that is about the psycho movies, right? We just yeah. decide which ones. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I, I would go for the harrowers, but yeah. I'll, 
both options seem very interesting to me. Um, it would signal a bit of a turn in terms of being super dedicated to Clive Barker stuff. We would be talking about other movies by other people that have been recommended by Clive Barker. Yeah. So hopefully that would be something people will be uh, willing to to open up to. Uh, us talking about other movies and other yeah. stuff here. Maybe, and that would... Yeah. Hmm. And maybe it would be better to take a break from commentaries because we've been doing those f- for a long time now with the Sabrina series. So we could maybe if we yeah. went to the Harrowers. The only thing that, that that makes me a little leery about doing the the Harrowers stuff is that then we're using our time for reading that when you know we're try- also trying to read Aberat too. Sure, I think that the Harrower comics though they're. They, you read them pretty fast, and there are just six of them. So you can pretty much read them and take notes in like a day or two or a weekend, okay. and then you can just save that for the episodes. But, um, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. Yeah. and maybe, uh, maybe we'll set up a poll in Occupy Midian or something and see, you know. Sure. And, uh, you know, remember we still have our app. The BarkerCast app is available on the um, – App Store and Google Play. So you can download our app and you can download any episode. You can mark your favorites. You can do all sorts of things with them. And um, yeah, go ahead and download our app and subscribe to our podcast on uh, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. So you can do that and you'll be getting those on your podcatcher of choice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, and we actually have. We have like something like 2,000 subscribers or 2,000 people who follow our Facebook page. So I would like to, to implore those 2,000 people to also listen to our podcast because that's, that's, that's the, main, the main thing that we do. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I hope you, everybody enjoys their Memorial Day weekend. And um, this podcast, having no beginning, will have no end. You can find the show notes for this episode and join the discussion over at www.clivebarkercast.com, where we have news, features, reviews, and links to all the ways you can connect with us. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts and every other place you can find podcasts. Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and news blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.